I must say that, you know, Emmanuel Mwamba, we have come a long way. A long way. I know Emmanuel Mwamba from a long time. We have come a long way. And when, you, when, when I heard that his property has been restricted, I really laughed. I was shocked. I was really shocked. Because that property, Emmanuel Mwamba has been on that property for a long time. For a long time. He was P.S. The little money that he was getting there as P.S., it was going there. Eh? Afterwards, when he was dropped as P.S., I remember sitting with him in my office and the only story that he was talking about is finishing that property. Whenever he came to the office sitting in the chair, I can remember, I can still re-echo his voice in my head. He was talking about that property. Finishing that property. Whatever little money he, he got, he was throwing it to that property. The people that are around, around Emmanuel Mwamba might think that Emmanuel Mwamba is stingy. But no, no, Emmanuel Mwamba is not stingy, that's for sure. But for, for a number of years, he has been preoccupied in building that property. So I don't understand how he... But, but, but SEC or Kachinga Niva whoever it is, I don't understand how you would go and pounce on that property. A property that I know. A property that I know how much this man has been struggling with the wife. With the wife. At one point, they were all spending days there with these Indaka boys when they were building. The man of my boy was spending time there, sitting there with. The wife with these laborers, not that he, he, he gave her a kiva, nani, nani. No, it's just ordinary people mixing in dark and whatever beauty. That is how that property has been has been brought up. So I'm really, really shocked that the anti-corruption commission would come into that. And this is the this is my problem when you talk about this uh, fight against corruption, because. You don't talk about the corruption that somebody has done. If you tell me that Emmanuel Mwamba was involved in this and that and that, maybe I can understand. But to go and pounce on a property and then try to find faults on, on him, I think it is unfair. I think it is unfair. And I speak strongly about this because I have been with him. I know how he has been struggling. Of course, Hari uh, Karawa, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm being honest to the fact that we, we haven't been that close. So I don't even know the property, which one they got. But really, again, if you are seizing a property from him, I think you should be able to point at the criminality. What did Hari Kalaba do when he was a minister, which you suspect would have built that property? You can't go to a property and say, now, eh -eh, we have gotten the property. Tell us where the money came from. This is not fighting corruption. And this is what I've been talking about all along because some people thought that this government means well in terms of fighting corruption. Some people thought that. And they thought, no, for us, we are, we, we are spared. But unfortunately, you don't have to have had committed any criminality. As long as you criticize President Haka in the Ichirima, two things about to happen. Those who criticize President Haka in the Hichirima to, an, to the effect that he, he feels the weight, he feels the blows of democracy, two things will happen. It's either you are going to be arrested like they have been doing with me. There is nothing that I've done. I'm not a criminal. Uh -uh. I am arrested because of my talking. That's why I'm arrested. Nothing else. Go Kuma court, you won't find anything other than Chirifatari said this, Chirifatari said this. When I'm just expressing my opinion, when I'm just exercising my freedom and speaking for people, speaking for people, that's all I do. But it is on those that I'm arrested. And it is not because I've done some, I've said something wrong. Uh -uh. It is because I've criticized President Haka in the HLM. It is because I've criticized his governance. It is because I have called a spade a spade, such as President Daka in the HDMI is a, demo, is, 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 a, is a dictator. Like when I say, 
President Edgar Lund, President Haka Inde Ichilema, is not fighting corruption. He's vindictive. He's a bitter man. And these are real. These are real. People who are committing crimes in this country, they are not being followed. They are not being followed. But those who are critical of President Haka Inde Ichilema, those, they are in trouble. It's either you are arrested, or if you are not arrested, either DEC, Anti-Corruption Commission, or whatever joint, the illegal joint investigating team, that is an illegal whatever. It's either they follow you. It's either your bank account is seized. Your property is seized. These are the things that are happening to President Aka in the This is the democracy that President Aka in the was talking about when he was in parliament to say he's, he's practicing good governance. No, Waka in the You are not practicing good governance. You are the worst in terms of good governance. You have you are you 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 have persecuted so many people. So many people in the short time that you have been in power. You have you have unleashed the investigative wings on a number of people. You have punished people like me, whereby you even took me to Lukulu. I mean, I, it's like a Mapolis sells Yam Zambia. It's like it's a syllabus. You have taken me far and near just to punish me just to punish me for telling you the truth for telling you the truth it is not about anything it is about me telling you the truth and for that you have punished me for that you have punished me and really yes i've paid the price but i can tell you that i'm not going to relent i'm not going to relent i'll keep talking you can do whatever you want even death i am ready for it I'll keep talking. I'll keep telling you the truth. And it is because of speaking that Emmanuel Mwamba today has his property restricted. It is because of talking that Hari Karawa's property has been restricted. It's nothing else. It's nothing else but, but because they have been offering checks and balances. And their checks and balances are very valid. What Emmanuel Mwamba and Hari Kalawa are asking about uh, uh, that uh, uh, Clayson, eh? Clayson at State House, those are real questions which are supposed to be answered. And I'm wondering why cabinet is still quiet. Because I think uh, uh, Dr. Patrick Kangwa should be able to respond about these situations. He's the custodian of government uh, a, a system. But Patrick Kangwa is a custodian of government systems. And what is happening? How is this Clayson? When was this position created? The position that Clayson uh, uh, Hamasaka is sitting on. When was it created? A man Mwamba and Hari Kalava, they have got a right to ask about those choppers and the hiring of, of planes. They have got a right. Why are you going after them? That is cowardice. In my opinion, Vaaka in the and your government, that is cowardice. Instead of facing the reality, instead of facing these people and engaging them on the questions that they are asking, you decide to intimidate them. But that is cowardice. And why do I call it cowardice? I call it cowardice because instead of bringing politics, instead of confronting these people politically, you go and hire the state machinery on them. You go and offload the state machinery on them. That is cowardice. A man worth his sword, he faces his opponent with what he has as a man. Not you go and hire a Kapokola, you go and hire the anti-corruption commission. That is cowardice. Even what you do to me, it's cowardice. It's cowardice. It's cowardice. It's cowardice what you do to me to send me police officers to arrest me, to take me. It's cowardice. Because if you are really a man, you take me on. You say, Tayali, you have said this. Now, here is the here are the facts. This is not what this is what what is what is what it is, other than what you are saying. 
not to bring the police officers to intimidate me, to bring police officers to punish me. That is cowardice. Face people and confront them on whatever it is. Not what you are doing. Not what you have done to Hari Karaba. Not what you have done to Emmanuel Mamba. Not what you have done to a number of people. Not what you have not what you are doing. It is not right. And you see, you are doing this. There is corruption in your own government. There is corruption in this government, big time. Even at state house there, there is corruption. People are saying, no, Anton 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 Wadia, eh, he was bribed, and that's why he was fired. But we know that some people at, up at, at state house are collecting money to set up appointments, just like you know the old stories that we used to hear. People are getting paid. People are, are flying around, flying around at state house. Ministers are engaged in different things and so on and so forth. But you are not touching them. You are not touching them. However, there are certain people that you are targeting. This is a fact. Whether you like it or not, from my point of view, this is a fact. President Haka Inde Ichilema seems to be prone to punish people coming from the western from 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 the north from the no northern part of Zambia northern and eastern part because if you look around the people that are facing some of these cases mostly are coming from the northern part and eastern side i don't know somebody who is facing some of these charges coming from southern province i don't know i don't know but the people coming from this region this side President Aka Inde Ichirema is very quick to act. And yes, he said it even himself at, 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 the, at the airport. He said the hegemonies, eh? the hegemonies who have been stealing money since independence. From, from my point of view, I think President Aka Inde Ichirema just look at us coming from the northern part and the eastern part as hegemonies, criminals, that don't deserve anything from this country. But a lot of our kind of issue, you've got it wrong. This country belongs to all of us. So you can't come, become president, and start dividing us, and start seeing others as less Zambians. You can't. It is not right. And we won't keep quiet in fear of being accused that, no, we are going to be, to be labeled that we are tribalists. No. I mean, I'm not a tribalist. I'm talking about what is happening. I'm talking what is, about what is happening. You have filled up all important positions of this country with people coming from one region. And you are very quick to act on people like Abena Muamba, Abena Hari Karawa. You are people to act on people like those people in, um, in, in, um, in Iruapula. You are very quick. In Iruapula, you have fired those... Uh, uh, those are uh, uh, DCs and the, the Deputy Permanent Secretary. You have been very quick to fire them. But we have brought out cases. We have brought out cases before you and we have asked you to take action on people like, like Sylvia Masebo and this Foreign Affairs Minister as well as some people in State House. Jito has issues. Jito has issues. Jito has issues. Jito, you know what I'm talking about. Jito, you know what I'm talking about. Jito, you know what, you're what I'm talking about. Your friends in State House are talking. Don't think you are clever. Don't think you are the best. People are watching what you are doing. People are watching what you are doing. And I'm told some of the things that you have done, Jito, they are before the president, but the president has not acted. But he was very quick to act on Anton Wad. Why is he not acting on Jito? There is a karuma, I want to insist, there is a karuma that I've gotten. I don't have the facts, but there is a rumor that I've gotten that Jito got $50,000 from some people to set up an appointment. And it is being discussed in the state house corridors. And Jito, don't pretend that you are hearing this for, for the first time. I'm sure, Jito, you have heard about this 50,000 kwacha, which is alleged that you got 
from some people. This I'm, I'm telling you, it's not coming. Ishwambaku State House. It's coming from your friends, Mu State House, who feel that you are going over the bar. You are going beyond the limit. You are becoming a monster in State House. You are becoming a monster in State House. And people are not happy. And some of them, they have actually told me that the president knows about some of these things. But why hasn't the president acted? Why was he quick to act on Anthony Wadia? Why was he quick? Going further, this issue of Ruapula that you are talking about, you have actually implicated, you have been very quick to implicate the vice president. I have been researching on the Ruapula issue of the Swigilite. Eh, Swigilite. I've been investigating, I've been trying to find out where is the name of Mutalena Lumango coming in? I haven't seen it. But within the UPND circles and government, you are busy trying to bring in the vice president. I don't know unless otherwise somebody tells me. But from what I've, from, from what I've been sniffing, the name of the vice president has not come in. It has not come in. But why are you trying to implicate the vice president? From my point of view, it is by the fact that she's coming from a region where you think that all of us, we are criminals. She has got her own issues. I'm telling you, she has got her own issues and I've, I've expressed myself here. But I think it is very unfair to be dragging her in some of these cases just because you don't want her. We know that you don't want her. But you have to remember that it is constitutional. She's there on a constitutional basis because she's a running mate. And you are with her until 2026. In 2026, if you want, that's when you can bring another person to be the running mate to work in the HDM. To which you are not going to do anything because 2026, you are not going anywhere. So just relax. And enjoy the ride. Mutale Narumango is not going anywhere. And I'm not defending her. No, she's not my friend. She's not my relative. But I just don't like it. When you start implicating, dragging her name, simply because you don't like her. Simply because you want to find a way of getting rid of her. Maligning her. If she has done something, tell me. You call me in secret and tell me. Your friends are calling me in secret and they are giving me information. So, if indeed she's involved, tell me about it. I will come here and disown her. But so far, according to what I've discovered, she's not, she's not drawn into this. But you are dragging her into it. Why? Because of her tribe. That is my conclusion. That is my conclusion because I'm seeing criminals this side. Coming from this side, they are not being touched. But this side, people who are from this side, even when they have not done something, you want to drag them in. It is very unfair. It is very unfair. 